So what this is, I was on Etsy and they're having a Black Friday sale and I saw this, well basically it was a coloring book and it was like $60 and it looked really, really interesting. So I want to show you and hopefully it's as cool as it looked and we'll find out what makes it special. I bought it from someone in Ukraine, so it took a month and a half to get here. <laughs> so the anticipation. Oh, it's in a cute box. Oh, it's well presented. Look at that. Ew, that's bothering me. Have you ever noticed when you get something on Etsy, it's just so much better than when you get it from like Amazon? I don't know where to put this box. Watercolor trip inside. Are we going on an adventure? Ah, nuts, I ripped it. So this is the Inspire Inspiration Area Watercolor Kit. Oh, it's a kit? Wow. That explains what the price, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm missing one. I was about to say, oh, cute, but I realized. <gasps> oh, that, that wasn't dramatic. Boom, I'm missing the RU, Raw Umber. Oh, there it is. I found him. Here we go. All's well. Call off the search. So here is the little palette. As you can see, it's got little drops of watercolor up on the top of a very thick piece of cardstock. I think that's the word. So the colors that came with this set is violet, lemon yellow, raw umber, burnt umber, olive green, viridian, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, matter lake deep, ultramarine and indigo and the cool thing is bloop <laughs> these were all put together to be used specifically with this coloring book or as they call it a painting book <gasps> purple <Some> uh, <gasps> merry christmas to me okay oh there's little um blending cards i believe <gasps> what there's more i didn't read the description very well did i You're making me look bad <laughs> okay, so there's extra palette in here if you run out of that one, obviously. Cute. And it's the same colors. Very cool. And I believe this is kind of like a paint by number thing, but it also allows you to experiment. But I haven't looked at the coloring book yet. This is the coloring book. We're gonna look at that in a minute. Let's I'll see what else is in here. Okay, so I see a paintbrush. This is a Da Vinci. I believe a squirrel imitation. So no squirrelies were harmed in the making of this paintbrush. It's a number six round. And then there's also, there's way more in here than I expected. A number two round, which I believe is also the exact same brush. Look at that, fancy. I love round brushes, they're my favorite. All right, and then it has some um, swatch cards, watercolor paper. All right, and lastly, oh, that's kind of funny. This is some masking fluid, cool. And then, what's this? Is this wax? I believe this is wax, so it's like a giant, um, big chubby crayon. <laughs> so if you draw with that, the watercolor won't stick, I think. Oh, this is the most dainty maggots I've ever seen in my life. This is so cute. Okay, now the coloring book, the coloring book. All right, so this is the main attraction. We have the painting book, as they call it. I got the one in English, obviously. There was options. <laughs> and it's made out of watercolor paper. And the cool thing is, oh, here's the authors. Very cool. And the cool thing is it actually kind of teaches you how to use watercolors. So there's some techniques. I'll have to read those. And then there's like an area to test it out and practice. So it's like having a little teacher. Again, it shows you a technique and then gives you space to try it. And then here's where I wanted to show you. This is what I'm so excited about. So on the left side of the spread, we have instructions as well as the original reference photo of like this window. Then they give you a step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it yourself. And then they give you two sketches to fill in and practice your technique so you get two shots at it isn't that really really cool and all these photos are from italy this is a photo actually from 2016 that's not that old but they give you one test try and then like your final try that you can cut out and you know hang on your refrigerator so you can paint this window on the riva del garda in three steps step one step two and step three but each step has about four steps so <laughs> It's interesting. Maybe I've just been overcomplicating things. And in the tutorial, it actually tells you the exact colors to use and the uh, different little tips and tricks. So I'm very excited to try this out and to support a small business and artist. So this is really, really cool. And uh, yeah, I hope you get a kick out of this as much as I have. I'm so excited to try this. Look at all these. 
They aren't people, which I would usually draw, but I thought this would be so cool to like teach me how to watercolor. Oh, the texture is so cool and the cover page is really thick and each of the papers is really, really thick. Ooh, can you hear the thickness? I'm impressed. I'll have to try this out. Anyway, I couldn't wait to open this and share it with you. Next, I'm going to use it, but I literally just woke up and uh, I haven't had breakfast yet and my tummy is a gurgling. I'll be back when I have time for this, which hopefully will be later today. Maybe we can do like a cool transition. Ready? <gasps> and we're back. Let's finally use this thing though, right? Oh, and something I forgot to mention is this coloring book was $60 after the Black Friday sale. All right, let's put our palette over here somewhere. Here we go. Advice is from the master. I don't know if we'll need these or these. Let's paint Italy, shall we? <laughs> I'm gonna single-handedly paint all of Italy. Oh, I didn't know he says at the bottom here. Andre is ranked among the top 20 watercolor artists in the world. Way to go, buddy. Nice. Which one is that? This guy right here. Nice. All right, so I should probably go through all of the practices. All right, the first lesson is a flat wash. Probably need some water, don't I? All right, next it says into wet, wet into wet wash. Painting on a wet surface for colors to blend easier. Okay, so what you do is you get your, clean your paintbrush. <laughs> then you take a wet paintbrush and then you grab your color and you just bloop. So the term lift means to lift your painting by removing painting from a surface with a dry brush to correct mistakes. Let's do, we're gonna do a flat wash. Look, I'm learning these terms. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't know you had to use a dry brush for that, but I can see it making more mistakes than the ones it's fixing. <laughs> I've used masking fluid before, but it was like a lot harder to get off. This like just rubbed right off. I like it. All right, so we finished the little study that they've provided. So the point of that is to kind of understand what they're gonna tell you to do in like the tutorial section. And for most of them, I think I got it. Blur, I didn't really, I'm not sure, entirely sure I did that right, but I assume it just means to blur whatever it's gonna tell you to blur. So I think I'll get it when it's in like the context of a tutorial. Uh, I wasn't very good at lifting <laughs> and then partly I didn't really understand but I think that's gonna mean that when it tells you to color in like a certain shape it's gonna say colored in just partly which it'll have a picture to go with that and I think it's gonna make sense open <laughs> let's move on to the next page we get this to stay open and now we can work on this window finally <laughs> so we can always look back at the reference photo but let's follow the first step let's learn to watercolor shall we all right so step one is add a wash of yellow ochre to the wall if i can do this all right now we add a flat wash oh that is a gorgeous color it come right up to the edge Now what I think we're trying to do is get an even color. So you'll see there it's lighter and there it's darker. So I'm going to try a little harder to get the same color. So you can't let it dry while there's still a lot of paint there. You got to smudge it around is what I'm learning here. Because once it dries, it's a little harder to 
mixed together. So you see when I put it down, it's darker and bolder. And then you gotta like smudge it around to get an even coat. That's the best I could do on a first attempt. It's definitely patchy, but I'm going to assume that the more you do that, the better that's gonna look. And I also noticed that they put a much lighter wash than I did. So we're probably gonna have to take advantage of this little second attempt. Anyway, next is add a wash to the window frame, which we're going to mix crimson red and uh, the burnt umber. So we're gonna color in this inside section with that. Oh, I think I got the right color here. Not too dark. Next, it wants me to add the flower pot leaves, which we're going to mix olive green with the burnt umber again. Yeah, and then we'll mix those together. Let's try it out. Just add some like speckles. Yeah, it's definitely not the same color. Did I use the right green? Olive green. Theirs looks much darker. All right, now the next step is to wait for this all to dry. All right, now that that's dry, moving on to step two, which is add a wash to the windows of the colors YG and YO, but I don't see YG. I see YO. Now we'll come back to that one, but it says with a lot of water, we're gonna wash the stone frame using RV or RU, using RU, which is raw umber. This is a lot of water, so I guess I'll put that on this palette and then, okay. It says with three water droplets, color in the stone frame. Ta-da! I think that was my best so far. <laughs> oh, it's a little dark in this corner. Pull that out. Nice, I think that's my most even wash too. Nice! All right, next step, flower pot using CR and VB, which is crimson red and the burnt umber again. Add the wash stains on the wall using burnt umber and with raw umber, this one. I'm gonna mix those together. All right, and then we're gonna add the textures oh with a lot of water so let's add some more water to that and then add in these puppies some over here i'm also trying to uh look at this reference and see if i see why they're picking up certain places but for this they're just adding texture to the <clears throat> the background which isn't in the reference photo so this is just for creative purposes i guess and since I painted in the background so darkly, it, you know, it, <laughs> it's kind of hard to even see them. And then it says, add stains on the stone frame using raw umber and burnt umber. Do this. That doesn't look like the same color at all. All right, I need to go back to do the windows, which it said to mix YG and YO. So yeah, if you look at the palette, it says you're going to use YG plus YO. We have a YO, which is the yellow ochre, but we don't have a YG. We have this one that has a lowercase g. It shows an uppercase Y and a lowercase g. I wonder if it means indigo. I'm gonna have to just go with indigo and hope for the best, but it says mix indigo, hopefully, <laughs> with yellow ochre. Let's see what that looks like. I guess it's pretty close. Still not the same color that they have on there. Let's add more water to that, see if we can get a lighter color. Just gonna add a little more indigo on top. Like a soap. The next thing he wants us to do is add a wash of shadows from the flower and the stone frame. Yellow ochre and raw umber. It doesn't say how much of each to mix, but it does show to add a decent amount of water. So, I guess we're gonna add a decent amount of water. Ooh, that's a nice shadow color, isn't it? <laughs> shadow underneath here. All right, and then the shadows on the frame are using burnt umber and violet. Add our shading here. Ooh, that is a pretty color. Of course it is, it's got purple in it. Just add some uh, crazy texture like it shows in theirs. So it looks like they used maybe this color. 
I messed up. The next step was to shade up here, which was to use a different color. And that was ultramarine and yellow ochre. My bad. So gonna have to wait on that <laughs> to dry and then we can do that part. But the next step is add a coarse shadow on the flower pot. I see yellow ochre is very popular in this drawing. And then we're adding a shadow to this flower pot. Yeah, like so. Now we can add shadows to the window. And for this we're gonna use indigo and iridium. Yeah, I think I was right. I think it was a typo and it was indigo that we were supposed to use. Look, that went pretty well. I think that looks good. Oh, we also shade the leaves with indigo and olive green. Mix that with indigo. And we can add shadows to this. Not sure if that's right. That looks a little weird. I think this shadow here? Oh, that's where this goes. I was wrong. My bad. So obviously our light source is over there, casting quite a bit of shadow. But that looks way better now, doesn't it? That made a definite improvement. Yeah, this looks really good on the monitor because it's teeny tiny. Up close it looks a little, you know, blobby, but I'm actually really happy with this. I think it turned out really cool. I'm just gonna go and add anything I feel like it needs. <laughs> yeah, just because, you know? I do like that, that painterly effect that it has. We're still waiting on color. Oh, we have to color the flowers. We have to wait for that to dry and then we can color the flowers. I definitely am learning like how to make shadow and stay in the color scheme. This is really, really cool. Aside from like the typos, <laughs> which I think are probably coming from translation errors, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. So I'll give them a little bit benefit of the doubt, but this did cost a pretty penny. So, I mean, even though it costs a lot, it's not perfect. I noticed everything was mixed with yellow ochre. I assume that's how you kind of stay in the color scheme, which is nifty. Learning something. Another thing I'm noticing in the reference photo here, they used a much more textured paper than what I'm using, so that's not like showing through. Or they drew that way smaller, that could also be. <laughs> well look here, you can actually ask the artist for advice online. I didn't even see that. They like send them an email or go to their website and ask for advice. <laughs> I should be like, okay, hey, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I think I know what I did wrong. I put too much paint in the background, so it's much more saturated and vibrant than what they did. And I think that would have made a significant difference because the contrast would be a lot better. So knowing that, I kind of want to try again. I love that. <laughs> That's so cool. So there we have it. There's my two attempts. You should probably take a look at the original reference photo, step-by-step -step instructions, their final, and then my two final. Which one do you like better? I definitely made mistakes in both of them because I am a beginner. <laughs> I'm such a noob. I think when I followed the instructions more closely, or at least tried to, 
I kind of like this one better, except for I like the lighter wash on the background with this one. I think I did a much better job. There's not those tons of streaks like there is in this one. I think in each of them I did something better than the other. <laughs> so I guess I gotta keep practicing. I definitely look better teeny tiny and not up close. There's certain areas of the picture that has better contrast than this one and there's certain areas of this picture that has better contrast. Wow, this looks really really fun and there's still- look at them all. There's still a bunch more in here that aren't just a window. <laughs> I think my favorite part about this coloring book is that it tells you um, what colors to mix together to get the certain colors. There were some areas where they didn't really look the same, so I don't know if I mixed wrong variations, but I wish they had given a little bit more instructions as how much of each color to mix, but right now it just tells you what colors to mix and you kind of have to just wing it and try to get the right color. But I found that really, really helpful because what I do like about these pictures is they both have something that my drawings don't usually have, which is they have a very cohesive color scheme and they look good you know, together. Even though they're using blues and reds, they don't look super saturated and crazy. Like, they're well blended, and I'm learning a lot mixing these colors by following these instructions on how to do that, which is priceless to me. <laughs> and I really like that they, they give you this little tiny palette with extra watercolors if you run out of these. They give you these two um, thingies, which I assume you use in other tutorials. Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> the paper is all right. Like, you see it... It's not like perfect paper. It's definitely buckling underneath all of the water that I'm using, but it's good enough to like practice the techniques. I wonder if this palette washes off and so you can reuse it because I filled the whole thing with just this window. <laughs> Look at that. Sweet. I think this would be a really cool present to someone who's just getting into watercolor. What would be really cool is if they made one of these for like portraiture. I would be all over that. <gasps> but uh, it's surprising how fun it is to just paint an Italian window though. Like, look at that. Ah. So this kit isn't perfect, but I, I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm definitely going to use the rest of it, get my money's worth. <laughs> Let me know if you'd like me to film some more of these and see if I can improve as I go through the book. That could be a fun way to track my progress if you're interested. I'll have a link in the description to um, Insperia's Etsy page if you want to check out what else they have on their store. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed coming along with me to Italy where we painted a window. Oh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye. So cute. <laughs>